Hi Aquarius, welcome to your November 2016 love reading. So as you can see, I have already laid out the cards. I found out that I didn't have um, much time left on my memory card, so I went and deleted everything, and now I'm back for the reading. And uh, let me talk about the overall theme of November for you, the King of Pentacles. So this is a more mature energy, a very uh, stable influence in your life. This could be another person that you're dealing with, uh, definitely. So who could that be? It would be, sometimes it could be somebody who is older than you, someone who is in a superior position, like a boss. They could be your father. Kings can represent fathers. It could be the father of your child. It could be somebody who owns a business or somebody who is an accountant, but somebody who is really kind of tops in their field or they, you know, have a lot of people under them like a bank manager, maybe somebody who works at the stock, the board of trade or some kind of a, a, a stock exchange and they have underlings. Um, so this isn't somebody who's like um, a clerk, you know, this is somebody who is in charge, large and in charge. And this could just be a contrast. Maybe this is even attitudinal or like mental because um, in the past position we have the Knight of Wands, which can indicate a good time Charlie type of a person, somebody who is, um, <laughs> I, I don't like to say this, but a wham bam, thank you ma'am, type of an individual. Um, it's supposed to relate to Sagittarius actually, but I think it could be Aries, just because knights are, are connected to battles, and um, Mars is the ruler of Aries, and that's a god of war, so... That, that makes more sense to me, but any kind of fire sign. But it's somebody who has trouble making a commitment. That may have been in your past. And this person may be very exciting, though. The king is a lot more, especially the king of pentacles, is going to be a lot more um, stable. But the downside, if you will, is that it's not going to be as outwardly exciting, perhaps. It'll be much more predictable, whereas the Knight of Wands is not a predictable character. But these could definitely be people because they're court cards. And um, so I'm, I'm seeing that contrast. Maybe you had that kind of a, a wild little period there, and now you've settled down. What's coming in for you is a chariot. Now, <laughs> if I want to assign an astrological... Uh, signs to this this would be cancer um, I, so I don't know you know it's funny because I could I could almost see a cancerian um, kind of exhibiting those same traits that we associate with the knight of Pent or the king of pentacles but the difference is that a, a cancer person can sometimes be a little bit moody and so they wouldn't exhibit the same I don't know if you'd call it, I, I don't really like to, 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 to focus on, you know, oh, this person's stable, this person's unstable, but the King of Pentacles is like a rock because, you know, the earth signs tend not to be very emotional, so they kind of stay the same in that regard, and then you have the money angle that's very grounded as well. So um, I feel like it could also be a situation where you are going to feel maybe because of this relationship that you can focus on your own life a lot better because the the chariot card is actually a card of victory but it's you're dealing with a lot of adversity or at least distractions perhaps in trying to focus or be one pointed in whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish so if you've been feeling chaotic especially about a certain past relationship 
um, I think that now things are starting to settle down and maybe you kind of distance yourself from that person because you realized that they were actually affecting you in a, in a negative way. Because the higher perspective, well, didn't want to do that. The higher perspective is actually the Magician card, one of my favorite cards. It's funny. Um, oh, today is the 8th. I'm recording this on the October 8th. And um, I was trying to think. Yeah, on October 8th. And so this is like an infinity sign above his head. You know, that's an 8. And uh, the Magician is all about conscious co-creation. Doing this for yourself, you know. Um, instead of relying on the outer world to make your luck or whatever you want to call it. It's being able to realize that you possess the power to, you know, shift your life in the direction you want it to be. Obviously, we can't control other people and we can't control outer events. But that doesn't mean that we have no control. And I think that's where people get mixed up. Aquarius is a sign that's fixed. So you tend to kind of, you know, latch on to something, maybe an idea or a person, and then just keep going. Mail, I was going to say mailing it in. And I don't mean that you don't go, that you go through the motions, but you're very, you have a lot of endurance, a lot of persistence. And this can make you very successful career-wise because you don't just give up at the first sign of trouble. And that's wonderful. The only thing is that in relationships, sometimes it's a dead end. And you, you will, I'm not saying you, you would do this 100% of the time, but some of you, you know, think that you're being loyal when really you just don't like change. And you're also, you know, you, you can tend to fall into ruts where you just like the familiarity of something rather than whether or not it is good for you. So that's something that really has to be addressed within yourself in order to kind of harness this sort of energy, which is kind of like t speaking to you from a spiritual perspective, because maybe this affects you in different areas of your life, maybe not just your love life, where you don't like to, you know, make changes because you, you know, everything is, is, is comfortable for you at this moment. Maybe it's, maybe you kind of um, fear the unknown sometimes. I mean, we all do. But it, it, the point is that there has to be the faith to believe that um, no matter what you do, you're going to be okay. And that, you know, if something isn't working, that you have to address it, that you can't just uh, sweep it under the rug. And the longer that you actually go down a dead end, the more disempowered you will be. And the magician is about kind of taking the bull by the horns and, uh, um, or the wand and the magic wand by the hands and really just saying to yourself, what do I want to attract? And obviously you have to also take action in order to make it happen, usually at least. But just by even thinking of it, thinking that it could happen, that is, you know, most of the work. The problem with a lot of people, and I see them doing this all the time when I'm reading comments online, is that they say, you know, they completely reject something out of hand. And if you have that, you know, mentality, then yeah, things won't happen for you. You always have to kind of have that sense of the possibility, in my opinion, if you want something to, you know, be made manifest. So. I think that some of you um, realized at some point that you had more power than you knew and you took steps. Maybe it was just kind of distancing yourself from somebody who was kind of turning your life upside down. That was always a possibility. But whatever it is, it's 
brought in somebody more suitable. What crosses you is the fool. Now this would be kind of a reverse position fool. And um, I think again, it kind of goes along with what I just said, afraid to take risks, afraid to, you know, venture out unless something's guaranteed, you know, being too cautious, overly cautious. And um, it's funny because Aquarius is associated one of your rulers besides Saturn, and I think the main ruler associated with Aquarius is Uranus, and Uranus is a very erratic planet, and there's an eccentricity, uh, an unpredictability, and a non-conformity -conform that, you know, kind of is a signature of Aquarius because of this influence. And Aquarius can sometimes, you know, be very, it's funny, sometimes it can be unpredictable in terms of being quirky, but sometimes it can be very conservative. You know, there are even conservative pundits and politicians like Ronald Reagan who were Aquarians. So it's not, you know, a given that Aquarians are going to always do the most outlandish thing. And because you have that co-ruler of Saturn, I think it can, it can, and being a fixed sign, it can make you uh, be a little bit uh, afraid of taking risks and playing it too safe. Now, obviously, being foolish, <laughs> which is, you know, a not what the fool represents, by the way, but being foolish is not a good idea. And taking unnecessary risks doesn't seem to be a good idea, but there is, a, you know, a tendency in some people to just be totally um, fear-based when it comes to making changes, even positive changes. I mean, I've, I confess to that as well, and I have Taurus rising, another fixed sign, so that might be some of what is going on here, is that status quo, wanting to preserve it. And so it's just something to watch out for because a fool is such a great card. It's a card of like, you know, unlimited possibilities. And in the reverse position, it's kind of having limited thinking. And maybe thinking that you only have certain possibilities, being tunnel vision. Or having tunnel vision, I should say. So the advice is the justice card. Um, well, that's interesting because the justice, maybe that good time Charlie is your spouse and it's time to seek a divorce or if you're not married to, you know, move out. Maybe that's what's going on here. But maybe you have met somebody that has kind of allowed you to see that there are other possibilities and maybe you are still resisting that lesson um, you know that there are maybe you have an idea that let's say you're a woman which most of you will be but this is this applies to anybody even a man can understand this even though I'm going to put it in the context of a woman seeking a man a woman thinks all men are dogs because that Knight of um, Wands person kind of showed up for you in that way. And there are people who literally believe that everyone is a certain way. Now, what do we call those people? We call them prejudice, don't we? And Aquarius is supposed to be a sign that is known for being totally tolerant of everybody, uh, no matter, you know, what their ethnicity or their their, uh, you know, gender, sexual orientation, what have you. But, you know, you'd be surprised. People that have fixed energy, and you, you probably you may very well have Mercury there, and you could have some other personal plants, you know, can be very, um, I, I don't like to say the word prejudice, but sometimes maybe that's the truth. And the reason I say this is because you can question your beliefs. I don't mean hateful, by the way. It just is, 
you know, even if somebody said all men are dogs because they have experienced time after time of betrayal from men, even those um, people, you know, whether it's another male or female, those people have a reason to feel that way if life has shown up that way for them. Um, and so it's not necessarily that somebody would be hateful in coming to that conclusion. They may just assume that it's true. And so what I would challenge you is thinking that way because if you feel that there are certain set things with people, what happens is if you believe in the law of attraction, and that's always, maybe some of you don't, but that will show up for you probably. And so it will confirm your suspicions. But if you kind of challenge your beliefs on a constant basis and say, you know what, I just haven't met the right one yet, then I think you open that space, you know, for something to actually happen. And this is part of that co-creative energy. You, you know, in order to be a co-creative being, I feel like you also have to be someone who is open, totally open to possibility as the full upright suggests, who believes that the sky is the limit and it, maybe even not the limit, right? That's even more limitless. So um, that's why I mentioned that. But the justice card can also mean that if you had somebody who kind of did you wrong, remember that there's cause and effect in the universe. And I don't mean ha ha ha, instant karma on that person. I mean, not for you to feel like the victim, because then that creates that negative, you know, spiral that you don't want, where you feel like out of control again. Because if you're a victim, you are not in control. That means that somebody did something to you and there was nothing you could do about it. And now you're screwed for some reason. And so there's this feeling of like, they did this, now this is how I am. Instead of seeing it in kind of a continuum where, okay, this event happened, now this event happened, and this event I like a lot better than that event because it's benefiting me and that one didn't. But if you start feeling like a victim, then it kind of requires you to be helpless and hopeless in a way. So it's definitely something to move away from. And the, the Justice card is letting you know that everything is in divine order. And also in the future to seek out equity in your relationship. Not 50-50 because I don't believe that there is such a thing in a relationship. I feel that that is kind of like keeping books. Okay, I did this for you, now you do this for me. More along the lines of this person really is, you know into this relationship. I'm not having to do the heavy lifting. They, you know, we have long conversations. They are interested in my, my ideas. I'm interested in their ideas. And it's like this exchange of energy. Okay. Um, and I got as the outcome card, the five of pentacles, which is a card to me associated with lack consciousness. Now, obviously, I'm not going to end the reading like that. I needed a clarification card. But this is kind of like one of those friendly warnings about what happens when you, you know, refuse to see what needs to change in your life is that that this is like the state of consciousness. I kind of um, referenced that when I said, if you don't see, oops, sorry about that. I said, if you don't see what, you know, if you don't see what is, is happening to you, even the unpleasant things, as somehow helpful, um, needed, uh, the right thing at this time, if you see it as this wasn't supposed to happen, it's unfair, blah, blah, blah. This will generate more of this, which is lack, consciousness, seeing the glass half empty. And so um, it's a cautionary tale, or, or it's a caution to you to avoid 
um, that type of mentality. The Justice card is actually a card of comfort. And um, I still get, you know, I still get comments on my videos of people, you know, phrasing things in a position where they were the victim. And I get it. I get it. You know, I certainly have had situations where um, maybe not in romance as often as in other areas of dealing with people where, yeah, I totally felt that I was not um, treated the way I should have been treated. And believe me, I mean, in one particular case that involved a job, um, I mean, it's, it's amazing how far I've come because for a long time I was mired in that belief that I had been done wrong. And now, sitting here at this moment, I would have never have believed it because I'm so grateful for everything those people did in that workplace. Thank you. Thank you all. Because now I'm here. The contrast you provided was just totally valuable for me. And I'm not faking this. It's taken me to this year will be 15 years since I left a certain job. And for years afterwards, even after some people left that I felt had done me wrong, I still held on to that resentment. And I can honestly say right now that I am freed of that. And it wasn't anything, any work I did on the outside or trying to really make it okay. I don't think you really can. When you really feel like you were screwed, it's very difficult to kind of um, twist the situation into a pretzel to make it come out okay. Sometimes it's just a matter of making peace with it in the interim until your life progresses to the point where you can fully see how much better life has been for you. And I mean, it's just a wonderful, I can say this in full integrity that if you just feel your feelings and don't run away from them, eventually you will see how that event, be it in a personal relationship or in a job situation, whatever, has come to assist you and why it was all good. So the clarification card is a judgment card, kind of going along with what I just said, that this is a rebirth. Um, you have to come through the fire of whatever has happened, but you can see, you can rejoice in that. You don't have to feel like, oh my gosh, um, you know, you, you're never going to believe what they did to me. You're going to, it's like a turning point in a way for you to be able to fully embrace um, what has happened and turn it into something positive for your life instead of a litany of complaints about, um, you know, what bad things have happened. And I do feel like you have stability and stability and uh, a sense of personal um, self-empowerment that are coming in for, for you in November in whatever form that takes. Aquarius and so I'm going to leave it there as um, the lawn gets mowed outside and I hope you enjoyed this reading. If you would like a private reading where I use your natal chart to kind of add a very um, personal layer to a, a reading whether it be in love or career or a combination please click on the link below that takes you to my web store otherwise have a wonderful November Bye.